Thank you very much. So yeah, thanks, thanks a lot uh, to Aragon first. Like I'm super happy to be here. It's actually the first time I get to talk about continuous organization. So I'm very pumped to be here. So my name is Thibaut Favre. I'm the CEO of Fermit. And I'm also a part-time partner in, a, in an organization dedicated to European entrepreneurs that's called The Family. And today, I'm here to talk about continuous DAOs. So basically, the application of the continuous organization model to DAOs. So really, the question I want to address today is how do you finance a DAO? Indeed, like when we talk about DAOs, we, we often talk and refer to how do we use a DAO to allocate money that we have and allocate resources that we have. But we barely talk about how do you get money in the first place. So not every DAO, to be clear, needs to be financed. Like uh, if your, your DAO is financed by mining rewards or trading fees, you, get, you do revenues, you make revenues, so you might not need to be financed. But even then, you might want to leverage those revenues to get more financing to, to do more with your, uh, with your DAO. So there's basically three options you have. The first option is uh, to ask for a loan. But huh, unless you make a lot of revenues or unless you have a valuable collateral to offer, uh, if you ask for a loan, like the interest rate is going to be way too high for you to consider. Second option is a donation. So OK, that works. You can, you can ask donations for your DAO. But the problem is it's very hard to sustain. The third one is capital. And, but if you are to ask investors to invest in your DAO, then what is the value? What is the value, the proposition you offer to investors? Because I, let me guess, if you create a DAO, I don't think it's to sell it to Google in the next five years. Um, so then what is the value? Are you going to fundraise through an impractical STO and based on the promise of future dividends voted by the DAO? Uh, I guess it might not be a good uh, value proposition for an investor. So here's a better idea. What if instead you would leverage your present and future cash flows, the cash flows generated by the DAO, and you would, you would use that to continuously fundraise your organization. So that's exactly what the continuous organization allows you to do. So to become a continuous organization is very easy. What you need to do is you create an extension to your organization. So in the white paper, extension is what I call a decentralized autonomous trust. But right now, you see a man on a mission. I'm trying to remove every word of crypto from my presentation uh, to get more accessible. Um, and so this uh, extension I is issuing cash flow based, governance less financial products called FAIRS. So FAIRS is like frictionless uh, agreement for investment and returns. Why not? Um, and it does this on a continuously open primary market. So how does it work? If you zoom in into the, this, this extension, what is this extension? It's a smart contract with very few specific functions. So the pay function is like, as a, as a DAO, you will direct your customers to, to pay your DAO through this function. Uh, and then you have the buy function to buy fares, sell function to sell fares, and burn function to burn fares. And this smart contract has one beneficiary, which in this case is the DAO. So instead of uh, all these functions, then the, they are ruled by a bonding curve. But instead of going theoretical about a bonding curve, I'll take a, a very concrete example. Ouch. So yeah, I cannot continue. Like, this is not the, do you have the PDF? Because like, uh, here, unfortunately, you don't see anything. So well, let's try it. Trust me, it was much nicer uh, on a PDF. So basically, the way I like to, to see how it works is like a funnel. So imagine you have this funnel. So you, you see a, a tip of it here. And when you invest, what, you act what you're actually doing is you're actually pouring money into that funnel. And that goes to a certain level. And this level gives you the number of fares that you're going to be able to get in return of your investment. So here, I'm the founder, so the, the guy at the bottom left. And I decide to invest 100 DAI into the continuous organization. So I put this DAI into the funnel, and it gets to a threshold. And this threshold gives me. 14.14 fares. And so what you see on the, on the right, yeah, that's right, uh, is at the top is the organization. So the organization is going to get out of this 100 die, it's going to get 90 die. And there's 10 that's going to be stuck, like, so that's the, ro the, um, the rose part, that's going to be uh, stuck in the buyback reserve of the, of the smart contract. And so here we can see the first two parameters of our continu continuous organization. The first parameter is the investment reserve, is that when uh, an investment is being made, how much of this investment stays in the buyback reserve. So that's the first one. So here is 10, 10%. And the second is obviously the angle 
of the funnel because the wider the angle, the less tokens are going to be created, the less fares are going to be created, and the s the uh, and vice versa. You you hear me? Um, so just to be to make sure that everybody understood, so let's now make the stupidest move you can do at this stage is like you were the first one to invest, and immediately you want to sell back your fares. So what happens? So you sell back. So you don't see, but uh, here's a you're, you're calling the sell function. So here you. Bravo, you just lost 90% uh, of your investment because basically when you, when you went with your fares and you presented them to redeem them to the, to the extension, so you presented 100% of the supply and so it's going gonna, it's gonna to use the, the full buyback reserve to reimburse you uh, your tokens. So in the buyback reserve there was 10, so you got 10 back. So, so obviously you don't want to do that. That's the, the worst case scenario. That's the stupid move. So now that you know how to lose money with a continuous organization, let's, let's see how you make money. So I go back to the previous. So I'm the founder. I invested 100 DAI. And now an investor comes along and says, well, pretty nice. I like, the, I like the idea. I'm supportive of this project. So he also invests 100 DAI. So by investing, same, same thing as the founder. So the, um, the organization gets 90 DAI. Uh, the buyback reserve goes to, to 20. And the investor got 5.86 fares. Obviously, as he's investing after, he gets less uh, fares than the first investor. And then, so here is the transfer function. So as the founder, I want to, I have identified key people in my community that I want to incentivize, but I don't have money to give them, so I'm going to incentivize them with fares. So here I'm transferring to my beautiful graphic designer um, uh, 4.14 uh, uh, fares. And nothing is affected for the organization, so I just transfer some fares. And then, yeah, first customer appears, first customer appears, and he buys whatever product you're selling, he buys it for 100 DAI. And here's the second, uh, the, sorry, the third parameter for continuous organization is like out of these revenues, which percentage is going to go back directly into the buyback reserve? So here I took 20%. So on 100% revenues that uh, is paying, 20% of it, so 20, is going to go directly into the buyback reserve. So as you can see, it really it increases the the price of your fare because uh, the buyback reserve is is making a bump. Um, after that, the organization starts to have money and says, well, as an organization, as the DAO, I also want to buy fares to be able to incentivize more people in my community. So it uses a little bit of its treasury, like 100 DAI again, you don't see it, but 100 DAI, to uh, buy fares. And so doing so, uh, as it's the, b the organization is also the beneficiary, 100% of its investment is going to go to the buyback reserve. So again, the buyback reserve, you see, like, it becomes very, uh, um, uh, gets more and more attractive, like uh, there's more and more money in the, in the buyback reserve. And at this stage, so good move, you, you convince the investor that you're a well-managed and trustworthy organization. So you say, well, actually, it's, uh, I, I really trust you, trust you guys, so invest 100 more. And then the, it's the end of the month, the graphical designer needs to eat and needs to pay his rent, so he decides to uh, part with uh, some of his fares, like two fares. And so, unfortunately, here, like, you, there's some key uh, thing missing. So you don't, you don't see what ha what's happening, but basically, it's, uh, it presented, it redeemed two fares to the, uh, to the extension. The extension bought them back with the buyback reserve. Uh, it gave it give it give him a proportional amount of, uh, of the buyback reserve. And then these two fares got burnt. So the supply got reduced. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Whoever did this, thank, thank you so much. Hey, nicer, no? Um, so, so that's it, and so the supply got reduced. After that, the organization realizes that it bought too many fares. Uh, it doesn't need to incentivize that much its community. So instead of keeping fares on its book, it decides to give the value back to the, to the fare holders. So it does this by burning fares. So by burning fares, what happens is immediately the value of these burned fares got uh, added to the buyback reserve. And finally, as a founder, like uh, I came to a disagreement with my community. I cannot stand it anymore, and I want out. I want to move on. So I decided to sell all my fares. And uh, by doing so, so I will get uh, almost 180 um, DAI. So as you can see, 80 DAI, I'm still down 20% from my initial investment. But uh, had I not given uh, uh, fares to my graphical designers, I would be profitable. So that's uh, basically how it works. So as it's nice, maybe I can. I can just run it very quickly. 
So you buy, then the investor buys again, then you transfer the eyes, uh, customer comes and pay, so the, it, uh, it increases the buyback reserve. Uh, the organization buys uh, fares, the investor buys more, uh, and then the graphical designer sells some of it, some of it is burnt, and I sell my, uh, the, the, the 10 fares I had. So, so as you see, this is, this, this is easier to, uh, to visualize, I guess, that, than to explain. And so why is it so good? Why I, I think it's really, really good model to finance DAOs. So first, we're talking about continuous fundraising. So it's not, sorry, it's not continuous fundraising, it's continuous financing. It's not like a fundraising when you have a start and an end and people need to invest at that moment. It's like anyone can invest at any time. So that's extremely valuable but because what it means is that as a founder, like it's permissionless. Nobody needs to call you, hey, can I invest? Like you just focus on your business, you just focus on executing, and the more you execute, the more you grow your business, the more financial you get. Second, there's guaranteed liquidity. So guaranteed liquidity doesn't mean that you will, uh, uh, you, you will always make a profit, but that means that you, want you can exit at any single time. So if at one point you disagree with what the organization, organization is doing, you can always sell. And that's basically your governance right. You can say, well, I disagree and I walk away. Uh, the tokens are obviously have real value because they are based on the cash flow generated. So that's also something that is very important because as I said, that means that if your business is doing well, your token value is, is gonna do well. It, it, it cannot be otherwise. There's also no governance attached to this. So, so as a founder, it's very important because that means that you can really focus on your long-term mission. Uh, you are not trading capital for governance rights here. These fairs are very effective in incentivizing community because for the, for the first time, like you have this real financial product that you can distribute to your community and that gives them a real upside on what, whatever your organization is doing. And it's open to anyone. It's frictionless investment. Like you can read that, like it's lawyer free. Uh, it's supranational. So, so that's why I think uh, the continuous organization model is really, really good model adapted to financing DAOs. And so the, the next step for, for us now is to bring that to life. So to bring that to life, I'm very happy to announce today that we are creating a company. It's called Fairmint. And so Fairmint uh, is really here to help entrepreneurs uh, create their continuous organization and, and help people, their community, participate in the success of the organizations. So if you want to, if you want to create your continuous organization, please, please get in touch with us. So you can go to famine.co and just leave us our contact info and we'll get back to you very quickly. And, uh, and so that's the, that's the goal. Uh, for us and uh, we are also uh, engaging now uh, with uh, Aragon because the, the next step, like very next step for us is to provide the community with a reference implementation because so far a lot of people has ask, has have, have asked us like, okay, how do I do, like I want to create a continuous organization and uh, so now that the white paper is finalized, it's like finalized last week basically, uh, so now we're implementing it. So, so that's the very, the very next step for us. And finally, final word, just like why, why, why do we do this? So I think uh, this is the, the thing that for me got me into crypto uh, that really excites me is that for the first time we get to reinvent financial incentives. And I think uh, it's a surprise for no one that right now uh, in the world is a bit of a mess. Like I'm French, there's yellow jackets in the street every Saturday. And obviously we have a big, big problem with value redistribution. And, uh, and I really think this continuous organization model is a model that align the interest of stakeholders much, much better than what we have today. And so using this model, we are able to create organizations that are much more robust, much more inclusive, and much more redistributive. And I hope, one thing that I hope is, you notice that I talk about organization and not necessarily businesses, because as it's governance agnostic, it means that you also can raise funds if you have a nonprofit. The only thing you need is a business model. If, as long as you have a business model and you generate cash flows, you can raise funds. I had a non-profit, raising funds on, on a non-profit is something that is extremely hard and I wish for no one to, to have to go through that. And I wish we can raise funds as a non-profit as easily as we can raise funds as a for-profit and I think this model allows it. Thank you very much for your attention.